Hey guys, I'm Josh Charles. I'm coming at you from Park City, Utah. Uh, today I'm going to show you guys how to top land and how to avoid some of the common mistakes. Uh, whether you guys are just trying to avoid some bad weather coming in and you just want to land real quick or you've been soaring for a couple hours and you just got to pee really bad. Um, either way, uh, it's a great skill to have, uh, but it does have its inherent risk. So take my advice with a grain of salt because uh, you can't show everything there is to be able to top land in one video. Uh, but I hope you guys learned something and I hope it helps. When you're starting out, uh, you always want to make your passes further away from the lip of the hill. Always give yourself an out. Because if you do go too close or uh, put yourself too far back, you could get parked and then you just sink out into the rotor. Or it's a bad day. Uh, but here I'm coming in uh, right along the edge, not too high, kind of staying a little lower on the hill. i uh, going to make the turn, tap the brakes and uh, stop my forward speed. And then what you do is you actually get close to the stall point, let it surge forward, but then catch it. So you're always having light brake pressure. So back, let it surge forward, catch it. Let it surge forward, catch it back. And then let it surge forward until you're on the ground. Notice I'm also standing up, so I'm in a PLF position. So if I did accidentally stall it, at least I'd be sort of landing on my feet, which doesn't work so well if it's pretty high, but. Uh, and then when you land, you go hands up. Here's one where I was too far back. This is on a spit nine. I actually flew myself into the rotor and then the wing went away. Boom! Yeah, no good, no good. Lesson learned, I was too far back. Here's the top view. Um, see, I'm too far back away from the lip. I'm actually in the rotor there and boom, wing went away. No bueno. Here's a better one. Here I'm closer up to closer to the lip, so I'm not in the dirt zone. Uh, where the guy's filming from was about 10 feet back. That's about the start of the dirt zone. This is a great drill to do to find your wing stall point. So what you do is you just, in winds that aren't quite soarable, you push your brakes down until that stall point, let it stall, and then try to recover it. This is really good for fine tuning your and figuring out what it feels like to, when your wing actually stalls, because that's when you're going to hit the ground. Um, another trick is you can let the trimmers out just a little bit and what that does actually increases your brake range and makes it harder to stall. Uh, one thing that does happen when you let the trimmers out though, uh, it can frontal easier on you. So that is that balance, is always finding that balance. So like I said, I just let the trimmers out just a little bit. Um, here I am hovering, so I'm basically have the trimmers out just a little bit. Um, I'm trying to feel that brakes, and you can actually go backwards on a lot of wings, not on all of them. My Mirage backs up easier than this hybrid that I'm on here, right here. This is a 15 meter. Um, the hybrid also, when it hits that stall point, it goes away. So you want to really be careful. That's why it's important to find every wing that you're flying, kind of play with that stall point and figure out what it's going to feel like. So that way when you are top landing, because you're teetering on that stall, um, you know where to let it surge back forward. Um, so here I'm actually going backwards on the Mirage and letting it surge back forward. And then if you hit the brakes hard, you can actually go backwards. Uh, once again, when you are playing around with these things, try to be close to the ground. Um, that way if your wing does stall, or actually try to be on the ground. That way when you're figuring out that stall point, because um, if the wing stalls, you'll just fall out of the sky. So here's Patrick, uh, he's coming in, he's hitting the brakes, reducing his forward speed, uh, brakes down, let it surge forward, brakes down, let it surge forward, and then when you land, you go hands up. On speed wings too, you can pop the trimmers, and that way you're not gonna take off. So here's an example of a steeper cliff top landing. This one here, so on a steeper cliff, you actually have to land closer to the edge, because if you get further down, it's, or if you get further back, it's gonna be more rotor. So the less steep the cliff is, the mellower the rollover, the further back you can, you can be without dealing with the rotor. This one here, like another five or 10 feet back and my wing would collapse. Uh, but once you hit the ground, arms up. Another thing to watch is if other people soaring. If you're trying to top land and somebody soars in front of you, uh, that could drop you out of the sky. Some do's and don'ts. So things you want to do, uh, anytime you're at a new spot trying to top land, you want to start making passes so that you always have an out. You can always get away from the hill. Uh, if you go back too far, you can get yourself parked and then you'll just drop straight down into the rotor or even worse, go backwards. 
uh, until you fall out of the sky. Uh, what you also want to do is play with your glider stall point. Uh, but when you do this, be on the ground and wind that you're not really soaring, or at least be super close to it. If you, if you can't fall out of the sky, don't play with the stall point when you're learning. Uh, you also want to learn how to back your wing up. This is something you can do when it's barely soarable. Just work on actually backing the wing up. Uh, anytime, like I said, when you're doing that stall, like I don't want to call it a stall surge, but basically when you're pushing the wing back and then letting it fly, always have light brake pressure. Um, you never want to go fully hands up, you always want to actively fly. You also want to be forward in your harness so that if you do come out of the sky or you do fall out of the sky, you'll land on your feet. So you're not going to land on your tailbone or your back, possibly breaking your back. All right, as far as your trimmers go, um, if you change the trimmer angle to be a little bit steeper, it makes it easier to come down. It allows your wing to pitch for further forward and back, which will let you dump more wind out of the sail to be able to get down. Keep in mind, with the trimmers, I would never do it all the way open, but with the trimmers maybe a third open, it will have more tendency to frontal. Um, you do have more brake range, so this is the big benefit of that. Um, also, Another good thing to do is come in low across the lift band. Once you get this dialed, um, you'll end up so you don't have to bleed as much height when you're getting ready to uh, set down. So yeah, uh, set yourself up because keep in mind you are going to get lift as you're crabbing across. So if you set yourself up a little bit lower, that helps, helps a lot. Um, obviously you don't want to, if you're too low, abort the mission and go back and take another pass at it. Once again, always give yourself an out. Don't put yourself too deep. Well, thanks for watching guys. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you want to check out my other antics, check out my Instagram page, uh, The Flying Josh. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them below. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some haters out there just because top landing is kind of dangerous, but hey, I'm in the mindset that you should just have the information out there. Do with it what you want. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Rock and roll and keep flying.